from the Atari to the consoles of the future. Video games are here to stay. We play all night like we just discovered gaming. Making friends and trying to master each game. Going to the store for midnight releases. Then you'll call and sit to work and play all day. Welcome to Adventures in Gaming. Today I'm going to answer 12 gaming questions uh, inspired by Dean Thompson of uh, Escape to Gaming. Uh, we'll get right into it here. Uh, question number one, favorite generation of consoles? Um, well, the first one has to be the first game console that I ever owned and that was the Atari 2600. I remember going to the mall as a little kid, um, I don't know, maybe eight to ten, somewhere around in there, and uh, we rarely went to the mall uh, when I was a kid. We were in a town that didn't have a mall. We drove an hour to uh, get to the mall, and we went Christmas shopping, I guess, with my parents and my uh, three other siblings. And I remember being in Sears or Montgomery Ward or something to that effect, and on an end cap there was this new gaming console thing, and, and I had never heard of it before, and uh, I think there was a tank game that was playing on it, and you could play it, and I absolutely fell in love with that, and it was, of course, asked for for Christmas from Santa. and. Uh, that year we got the Atari 2600 for Christmas and I had hours upon hours upon hours of enjoyment from that game console and from that moment on I was stuck with gaming uh, which I'm sure is going to be for the rest of my life. I've enjoyed it uh, immensely uh, since then and that would have to be uh, one of my favorite consoles. The next one would be the Nintendo 64. Um, that to me, the Nintendo 64 brought in an era where graphics were really starting to come about in games. Um, to that point they were okay and, and they were progressing with each console, but the Nintendo 64 to me was a leap in uh, graphics capabilities and the things that they were able to do on a console. And, and that, uh, to me, made one of my favorites. There were games on it like uh, Golden Eye, which is, to this day, one of the largest collectible games on the Nintendo 64. Um, Killer Instinct was an arcade game that I had spent a lot of hours on, and that came to that console, and it wasn't exactly the same as the arcade version but it was pretty close and it, and it did a great job of recreating that arcade console which uh, I enjoyed a lot of hours on. Uh, my third one would be the Xbox 360 that uh, ushered in what I would call the modern era of gaming for me. It was the first console that offered online multiplayer and uh, that for me changed gaming in a way that made it so much more exciting and so much more real to me because I didn't have anybody that I could play with um, my games and, and online multiplayer. I, when growing up I used to play with my brothers and, and uh, we had countless hours of sitting side by side and doing that but once I got grown up and out of the house and, and married and I just um, didn't have anybody to play with. I'm sitting playing single player games and when multiplayer came along uh, that was just really something that expanded the experience for me. So the Xbox 360 did that and that would be uh, my third uh, generation of console that I like. Number two, favorite gaming franchises. Uh, first and foremost it would have to be NASCAR. Uh, there's a series of NASCAR games that I have owned uh, starting with the GameCube and NASCAR 2005 all the way up to the latest release of NASCAR 14 which just came out uh, less than a week ago so uh, that is my sport of choice and my game of choice when it comes to uh, gaming online. Bioshock 
is another franchise that uh, I just discovered actually last year and had played through the first two and I got Bioshock Infinite uh, in waiting uh, waiting for me to get time to actually play it and finish that series off. Uh, the third one would be going back uh, in time a little bit and that's anything Mario. Um, I was a Nintendo fan for years with consoles starting with the Nintendo, the Super Nintendo, um, the Nintendo 64, just the GameCube. Those are all the consoles that I own from Nintendo and, and um, when those, when I was playing those consoles, anything dealing with Mario I pretty much uh, got and played the plumber uh, to, <laughs> to its uh, extent. Uh, games you couldn't finish or rage quit. Not too many games um, that I couldn't finish, but one that caused me fits and that I just quit playing and have never gotten back into. I could probably put it in my GameCube today and play through it, but um, Resident Evil on the GameCube, I put that game in and it was scary, which was the first like real scary game that I had, and I was just the opening scenes of that thing was like gave me shivers. Um, but there was a certain point where I got into it and I felt like it wasn't very far into the game uh, to where I needed a key to open up a door or something like that and I couldn't find it and I searched all over, went everywhere, I'm looking all over the place looking for something that I missed and I just couldn't find it and I'm like, I just gave up on it because I'm like, I can't even get past, I can't find this key, I'm never going to finish this game. And that kind of made me mad. So maybe I need to get back into that and see if I can't uh, can't find that key or find out where I was at and, and try to finish that game off. But once I got to that point, I looked around for three or four different times trying to find that key and to open the door to go to the next level or whatever. And uh, Resident Evil, you disappointed me. Sorry. And I know that game is highly collectible on the GameCube, but uh, uh, I just uh, I never got through it and it frustrated me. Uh, and maybe uh, that's the reason why puzzle games uh, I'm not too excited about. Um, I, I don't know if I can't think outside the box or what, but puzzle games uh, just really don't interest me that much, or mystery type games where you've got to try to figure things out, because if it's not laid right out in front of you, uh, I seem to have a bit of a problem finding my way through uh, certain levels and things like that. Uh, question number four, popular games or franchises you can't stand? Uh, first and foremost, Halo. Everybody loves Halo. My son loves Halo. All of his friends love Halo. I've got friends that just absolutely love Halo. I have played it a little bit. I've never played through any of the campaigns. Uh, games with Gold gave me Halo 3. Uh, I figured, well, I'll put it through and play the campaign. The campaign's probably all right. But I played a little bit of multiplayer with my son and his friends. And the idea of jumping up into the air <coughs> and shooting people while you're suspended in air just does not thrill me at all. To me, that was a feeling of helplessness. Is once you get up in the air, it's like you can't you can't move. You're just you're like on a floating conveyor belt or whatever, and you're pretty much a sitting duck. So for that reason alone, I really didn't like Halo and just haven't gotten into it. Um, and for the same reason, I'm expecting that Titanfall, this wonderful game that's supposed to be coming out for the Xbox One and, and Xbox 360. Um, I didn't watch the clip, but they came out with a, uh, a tips clip for uh, Titanfall here in the last couple weeks. But one of the noted things uh, before you watch the video in the little article was was uh, take advantage of vertical space. Why use stairs when you can fly? And that to me says Halo all over it. And so that alone has got me wondering about Titanfall and whether I could like Titanfall as a game. Uh, the next thing is uh, Alien Bugs. I can't stand Alien Bugs. Gears of War, I think, is, is an alien uh, type thing. And I don't know. I just, I'm like, when you got so many other 
real people type shoot 'em up things that that you can do. Uh, why do you need to shoot alien bugs? It, it's just something that for me just doesn't ring well, and and I've never really liked those games. Um, question number five: physical or digital media? I am a staunch <laughs> physical media guy. Uh, I don't know if it's because of my age. Uh, I know a lot of people are, you know, just download it and go, and that's no big deal. But for me, um, I feel like I don't own the product if I've got a digital download. I did digital download uh, at full price, the only game I've ever uh, digitally downloaded, and that's F1 2013, and that's only because they delayed the release of it in North America for some reason and I waited a month or two months after it initially was supposed to come out and they still didn't have a physical copy out so I finally broke down and bought the digital copy and downloaded it to my Xbox 360. Um, to me it all started with the iTunes music revolution and the fact that um, you download something but you don't really own it. They say you own it but you don't really own it because to me, when I own something, I can take it and I can sell it. Um, if I buy a car, I own a car and I can sell that car after the fact down the road if I want to get a portion of my money back. Anything from iTunes or these digital downloads that uh, you get off your Xbox 360, they say you own it, but I can't go sell it to somebody. I can't take that digital download that I paid for say 20 bucks for and then down the road say I want to transfer this license to somebody else um, that is the one thing I do not like about digital downloads and the thing that just breaks it for me I like to have the box in hand I like to know that when I buy it it's mine and I can do with it as I want and with digital downloads that's just not the case and like I say it could be because of my age but um, that's just what I prefer when collecting, do you prefer complete games with original items or not? I wouldn't call myself a collector of games, but I've, I've enjoyed games for a long time. For years and years, I bought games, and then when a new console would come out, um, I would sell off my old games because I found that I would not play. Uh, when the Super Nintendo came out, I sold off a lot of my Nintendo cartridges, um, at garage sales, people have gotten bargains at uh, garage at my garage sales, and now uh, as I get older, I don't know if it's once again because of my age, but I feel like um, maybe I should have kept some of that stuff. But uh, I do like when I buy games to have the original uh, artwork in case. When I find that I go to stores, we got uh, stores called Mega Replay in my area, which is a resale shop for games and just all kinds of stuff. Um, we've got Game Stops. Um, they'll have games that are for sale that don't have the original sleeve uh, inside the plastic box, um, like this one here. Um, they'll have some sort of a copy, some sort of a copy in the in, a, in the place of this sheet right here. And I will not buy a game if it doesn't have the original sheet in the outside. Um, why, I don't know. I guess it, I feel like it cheapens the product and isn't original. So um, I don't buy games like that. So, And I want instruction booklets. I don't want just a disc in a generic box. And so, yeah, I guess I do want all that original stuff, even though I don't consider myself a collector of games. Uh, Favorite game box art, question number seven. Um, I concerned more about box art, I think, when I was younger, um, when games were fewer and farther between for me. Um, I would eat up, uh, go, to, go to Walmart and stand in front of the electronics section uh, when I was a kid for where all the games were and just look behind the glass and just stare at all the box art and go oh, look at that one look at this one this looks neat and all that and, and you would hate to have to ask them because they got it all locked up to be able to open the glass case and slide it open and say can I see that one and then look at the box art on the back and 
and look at it and go, ooh, ah, and then go, no, I don't want it because I don't have the money. I knew I didn't have the money. I was window shopping uh, when I was a kid 90% of the time. Uh, but uh, box art just hasn't uh, been something here lately that really um, draws me to an object. Uh, I'm more looking at game reviews and uh, my Xbox magazine at, at uh, screenshots and stuff like that to decide whether I want a game or not. Uh, question number eight. Favorite games or series you love a sequel or a reboot of? Um, I've looked I've looked at this and there's there's not too many. I can only think of one that I really would love to have a reboot of and that is the game Stranglehold on the Xbox 360. That game is an absolute fantastic game. I would urge anybody who has uh, an Xbox 360 to go out and find a copy of Stranglehold if you can find it. It's an older game. It probably came out in 2008, somewhere around there, 2009. But it had some things in that game that were absolutely fantastic. A slow-mo kill shot where you would follow the bullet uh, path and watch it blow the guy's uh, back of his brain off and and uh, it had uh, just three or four different things and I can't remember what they were called because it was my son's game and he got rid of it um, which I never got to finish so maybe I should go out and try to find a copy myself so I can finish that game but uh, it had some fantastic things you could dive onto uh, rolling carts and roll across and then aim sideways and, and shoot people and, and do all kinds of neat things and uh, it was had some really fantastic cinematic sequences in it. Um, so Stranglehold, I guess, would be the one game that I wish that uh, if they would reboot that, that would be a, a must-buy for me. Um, Favorite-looking consoles. Um, I would say the, the my most favorite-looking console of all the consoles that have come out since the Atari 2600 would be the original Xbox. And funny for me, that console I never did buy. Um, I remember going to Walmart uh, when that Xbox was out and, you know, they set them out so you can play them. And, and Project Gotham Racing, I think, was a, uh, one of the big games that they had on the Xbox. And I would sit there and play it and play it and go and, you know being like the only adult standing around there <laughs> playing playing the original Xbox but to me that the the big X on the front of it and the the shape of the way that was um, really drew me to that console and I just never bought it because I couldn't afford it at the time and as previous I was really a big Nintendo fan and, and the reason I converted from Nintendo over to Xbox was Basically, Nintendo equaled family games, and Xbox equaled adult games, and, and that was one of the reasons I converted over, so a little tidbit extra there. Uh, how important is gaming in your life? To me, it's pretty important. I would call it my hobby. Uh, lots of other people have different hobbies. Other hobbies that I have had in the past were model railroading and... Uh, but gaming has really stuck with me uh, for the long haul and that uh, I would probably say I spend at least on average a couple hours a day um, there are some days where I don't play for three or four days but then I'll get on on a weekend and play for eight ten hours uh, uh, a gaming session and uh, get on Xbox Live on a Saturday night at eight o'clock and play till one or two in the morning till I finally just go, you know what guys, I gotta go to bed because I'm gonna be sleeping in tomorrow and I'm not a guy that likes to sleep in. I like to get up early and, and take advantage of the day. So, um, gaming's pretty important in my life. Uh, favorite YouTube channels you enjoy? Um, I, I enjoy um, several different ones. One of them is Vinny Corleone 62. Uh, he runs the Escape to Gaming series, and I discovered him uh, a little over a year ago, I think it was, when his channel first came up. And it was one of those things where you get on YouTube and you you start looking at videos, and then you wander off into three or four different levels of something else. And this just popped up, and I don't know 
I don't know how long he'd been on. I don't think it was very long, but he's about my age. Uh, I'm 47 now. I think he's low 50s, something like that. And uh, just has a lot of the, likes a lot of the same things that I do and as far as gaming and has uh, a lot of the same views that I do ha I have on life and stuff like that and so uh, his videos are rather long most of them are at least a half an hour long so uh, you sit back and uh, relax and, and, and have some time to watch his videos but uh, he has a great channel so take a look at that the next one is uh, Dio Speed Demon um, here lately I have been looking at buying a uh, used scooter and working on those and souping it up to uh, like a 50cc model and trying to see what I can do to make it go fast. I have never been very mechanically inclined. Uh, I pretty much stray away from that stuff. Anything engine wise. I was never really a car guy. I remember taking a shop in high school class. We had a vocational high school where you could take uh, printing, metal shop, wood shop, electronics, uh, and auto shop was was one of those and uh, I took the, I don't know, six courses, six weeks apiece and when we got into auto shop um, it just felt like a foreign country to me. <laughs> uh, I uh, I did alright until, until the teacher started talking about carburetors and, and I remember to this day sitting there in class going, man, I just do not get this. And uh, that probably influenced my uh, my uh, feeling about cars and working on cars and working on mechanical things. But here lately I've uh, been looking at scooters and trying to overcome that fear. And I figure, well, a little two-cycle, four-cycle engines, why not, uh, you know, like your lawnmowers, your weed eaters, things like that. Why not start digging into those and seeing? They're not, they're not all that complicated. And YouTube has a bunch of wonderful videos. And, and Dio Speed Demon is, is doing a uh, series on completely tearing down a Honda Ruckus uh, down to basic parts on the engine. And he does a great job of explaining um, what each part does and... and how it comes apart and how it's going to go back together and all that and yeah, I'm, I'm learning a lot from that channel. The other one is uh, Corrington Wheeler. Uh, Corrington is in the United States Air Force and he is one of my son's buddies from high school and I follow him. He's got, uh, he's got a band that he writes his own music and he does vlogs and kind of got me started in doing vlogs. Um, I'll uh, He's just a just an overall good guy. It's it's easy to have a fun time when you're around uh, Corey. So uh, I will post these three uh, links to these channels in the description and go check them out if you want. Um, the last question, question twelve: most immersive immersive games that grabbed you. Um, Lately, it was his Bioshock. I started playing uh, Bioshock. I got the Ultimate Rapture Edition, which included uh, Bioshock 1 and 2 with all the DLC. And uh, I got some time and I plugged that in and that game just sucked me in. I just couldn't believe um, how interesting that game was and how much fun it was and that I had never played it. Um, I got Bioshock Infinite, as I said earlier, uh, waiting in the wings to get it. I just got to find the time because I'm the kind of person that when I start a game, I want to plunge right through it and go through it all the way. So when I find that I have a few days uh, ready to go, I will uh, plunge through Bioshock Infinite and finish off that series. Um, the, other, the other one that I have down here is NASCAR 09. Uh, NASCAR 09 was the NASCAR game that uh, came out that was all that it all that I wanted it to be. Um, there was a feature in there called Paint Booth, and you can paint uh, you can paint your car. That was my daughter, by the way, my youngest daughter. <laughs> she didn't know I was down here taping. Um, you could paint um, your cars up. You could. Uh, I used Photoshop, Adobe Photoshop, and paint did went through all sorts of detail to painstakingly try to 
match the real cars or real uh, trucks that were on the NASCAR race circuit at that time. And I'll, I'll post a couple pictures of, uh, of that in this video of some of the details that I went through. The, the trucks especially, I was uh, rooting for Ron Hornaday at the time. And every weekend that he would have a new paint scheme or I seen that he had a new paint scheme coming out, I would go through and painstakingly try to recreate every logo position, everything exactly it was on the truck. And then I would race that in the NASCAR 09 game in the league that I was running. I got a lot of enjoyment out of that game uh, for that aspect alone. Uh, I spent as much time offline, if not more, creating paint schemes for uh, cars and trucks than I did actually racing uh, within the game. But uh, that was uh, that was one of the most immersive experiences I've had. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Vinny Corleone 62, uh, Dean Thompson for. Uh, doing his 12 uh, gaming questions video because that inspired me to do this one here and uh, thanks a lot uh, for watching and stay tuned for more videos don't forget like and subscribe